Hello, welcome to 7 Minute Sunday School. Today we're going to talk about how our preparation for the feast helps us to fully experience what the feasts have to offer when they finally come. Have you ever had to wait for something you really wanted? Isn't it true that the longer you had to wait and work for it, the more you actually valued it when you finally got it? Before we approach any big event in our lives, we must get ready for it. If we didn't prepare, then how could we fully appreciate the experience when it came? This is true in every aspect of our lives. Think about it. What would a weekend off mean if you spent each day doing nothing? What would a nice home-cooked meal mean after stuffing yourself full of fast food? What would your wedding day be without the engagement period, where you wait expectantly to see your spouse at the altar? Our awareness of the goodness of things is enhanced by having to wait for them. To sit and hope for good things with anticipation increases the joy we experience when the anticipation ends. Before each of the major feasts, the Orthodox Church has prescribed different periods of preparation to help us increase our hunger and thirst for what we will participate in when we join the feast. This preparation includes prayer, repentance, reconciliation with our neighbors, fasting, and almsgiving. Each of these disciplines is meant to combat inside of us barriers we have to truly experiencing the life God has offered to us in communion. Almsgiving or acts of compassion combat greed and self-obsession. Fasting and vigils combat gluttony, lust, and sloth. Acts of reconciliation combat pride, envy, and anger. In this video, in keeping with the theme of the last video of Hunger and Thirst, we will focus on the role fasting plays in getting us ready for the feast. The Church has also prescribed fasting before we take communion to help us learn to hunger and thirst for God as he has offered himself to us at the altar. Before each divine liturgy, we are encouraged to fast from sundown the night before. Fasting is also prescribed on Wednesdays in remembrance of Christ's betrayal by Judas during Holy Week, and on Fridays in remembrance of Christ's crucifixion. We are supposed to rest on Saturdays in remembrance of Christ's resting in the tomb, Notice that just like we talked about last time, every feast is patterned after Pascha. All the same elements of preparation that lead up to Christ's resurrection are there. Every week is a little holy week in Orthodoxy, and every Sunday is the day of Christ's resurrection, no matter what feast is being celebrated. This is once again because none of the other feasts would be possible without the resurrection of Christ. It's the event that proves that what looked like an ordinary man in the eyes of most people 2,000 years ago was actually the Son of God, shining with the uncreated light of God's presence. And this tracks with what our faith has taught us about how we encounter the presence of God. The presence of God is so quiet, so humble, and so subtle that it easily passes us by. But if we have the eyes to see it, we cannot help but see God everywhere present and filling all things. The only way for the uncreated God to unite himself to his creation without crushing it is by emptying himself and refusing to overwhelm the parts of us that he has set out to heal. When getting a blood transfusion at the hospital, the blood you are receiving has to match your own. Otherwise, your body will not recognize the blood as a friend, but would attack it as a foreign enemy from within. In the same way, the presence of God had to make himself familiar to us without overwhelming us, in order for us to recognize his blood as a remedy for our brokenness. Just as Christ, who was perfectly God and perfectly man, practiced extreme humility in being willing to die on the cross, so he has practiced extreme humility in uniting himself to every aspect of who we are, including our suffering and death, to save us. And so God comes to us gently and humbly and offers himself to us freely. However, here is where our work of preparation through fasting is so important. To see God, we must empty ourselves of the things that clutter our hearts and minds and bellies, distracting us from the subtle divine life that is offered to us. Since God became small in order to unite himself to our smallness, we must likewise prepare ourselves to encounter God's presence by removing all things that distract us from him. As we reflect on each of the feasts in the videos that follow, let us remember that much of our life in Christ consists in preparing for the feast. Let us remember that this is not meant to be a drudgery, but something that enables us to take in more and more of the presence of God and use it in service to him. It is important to note that not preparing doesn't keep God's grace from completely reaching us. Nothing can. However, 
If our hearts and minds and bellies are occupied with created concerns, the uncreated presence of God offered to us freely and fully will pass us by. God will take anything we give him, whether we arrive at the first or the final hour, whether we have repented much or only just a little. But how much we can receive of what God freely offers is contingent upon the orientation of our whole selves, body, mind, and soul. The saints are those that have cleared the palate enough to fully experience the same life that God offers equally to us all. Why do we fast? Why do we prepare? Because preparation is life in this world in anticipation of the world to come. And the world to come is the first fruits given to us that enable us to have fruit in this life and in this world encountered at the altar. We fast to clear our palate for the meal, and the meal gives us strength to clear our palate for the meal. More and more of the clutter surrounding the uncreated kernel that now resides within us is given every time we take communion and every time we prepare. Asking why we would fast or prepare for the feast is the same as asking why we would enjoy the benefits of the energy and the life we receive from God. The whole purpose of eating the feast is to enable us to have a life in God that is ever going and growing in a sustainable way. What is it going and growing in? The works of preparation that is given as a gift through the life of Christ that is offered in the mysteries. As we learn about the feasts that follow, let us remember that our preparation for the feasts is as important as the feasts themselves. And when we fail to prepare properly, let us remember that whatever preparations we did do will give us the chance to receive the life we need from the feast to prepare more fully the next time. God is waiting for us to take full advantage of the good things he has set before us. Let us do what we can to join him there.